Hey everybody, welcome back to Parish Made. Uh, today we're gonna be photo engraving onto this slate coaster here using the Xtool P2 and the XCS software. Uh, this is a beginner's guide. There's gonna be more advanced ways you can do this, but this is just a basic overview just so you can kind of understand how to process the photos and, and everything like that, starting from an original photo and ending up with a coaster. So if you like these, uh, be sure to like and subscribe, and uh, we'll keep putting out uh, videos hopefully weekly. So if you have any questions or want to see anything else, let me know in the comments. Well, let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is uh, you're going to take your, your slate coaster, um, <clears throat> there's no finish on this. It's just straight up slate, um, which the reason you would use this slate coaster is because when you set your drink down on it, the slate absorbs some of the moisture in it. You pick it up, it dries out really fast. So, um, <clears throat> the downside about slate coasters is, is they don't really want to engrave really, really crisp. You'll still be able to see it, but it's almost like a ghosted sort of an image if you just go straight on this. Um, so what I would recommend that you do is just take like some sort of finish, some sort of like I'm using a flat clear Krylon here. Uh, ideally, you want to use a flat or a satin. <clears throat> I uh, If you use gloss, it's going to make too much of a shield on it, in my opinion. And then it just the water just beads up on here and it doesn't actually soak in like it's supposed to. So when you do just a really quick flat or a satin just a light coat i'm not going to show you because it's just literally just sprayed on there and that's it um dries really really fast mostly because it's absorbing into it but um if it's really humid outside or if it's raining or something like that just spray it and take it and put it in your uh, laser and turn the exhaust fan on and just leave it for a few minutes it really doesn't take any time at all you don't have to wait for it to cure and do all that before you actually get started so um I've already sprayed this one, so we're going to put it in the laser and get it set up. Okay, so we're going to just pick a random picture here. Uh, this one's going to be Bill Murray because, you know, Bill Murray. But um, you ideally want a decent resolution picture. It doesn't have to be crazy high resolution, but it also doesn't need to be, like, really low resolution either. So there's several ways to cut out Bill here. Uh, you could do, like magic select stuff you can put it straight into xcs and kind of do this but i found this to be kind of inaccurate whenever it gets around the hair areas here so uh, we're just going to do it the good old-fashioned manual way this is the way i'm doing it you don't have to do this i'm using gimp gimp is a free software you don't have to pay for it um that's all i've really ever used because i am an amateur now i'm sure there's better ways to do this this is the way I know to do it, so this is the way I'm doing it. And you can do it any way you like. So you don't have to go crazy on getting too hyper detailed with where you're tracing this because ultimately at the end of the day, whenever we print this out, it's going to be somewhat detailed, but it... You know, it is going to be on slate, and it's going to be in black and white, so it's going to be, you know, fairly lower looking resolution as it is. Okay, now we got it all squared away there. I kind of sped it up because that gets boring after a while. All right, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to control C. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to open a new one here that's going to be the exact same dimensions. Go down to transparency. And then control V, we're gonna paste it. That's a floating layer. Go ahead and make a layer out of that. And now we've got Bill. So if we really want to, you can uh, alpha to selection. And we can shrink this one, just see. Kind of makes it a little bit more fluid and not so choppy because it kind of rounds off some of the corners that I did. Um, so shrink it down one, kind of get a little further into these layers and then come up here and do invert so that it selects the other side and then delete. You couldn't really see anything because I only did one there, but it does kind of help it out a little bit. All right. So let's go and let's export this. OK, 
Okay. All right, save that. And we can discard these changes. We don't really want all that. Okay, so here we are at the uh, Xtool Creative Space software. <clears throat> I've already got uh, the machine turned on and connected, and here's our, our view. So let's go ahead and get a aimed measure. And by the way, I am working on current version 2427. All right. So now that we got the aim measure, let's get a little bit closer view of it. And let's uh, get Bill here. Display original size. All right. Now you can do this like a couple different ways. Obviously you could just throw them in the center right here. It's got a little cut off at the bottom, but considering we have plenty of room here. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to let this fall off the edge a little bit. Because I think that's going to look better. Alright, that looks pretty good. Alright, now if you really want to, just to kind of frame up real world things, um, what you can do is get a shape of whatever that thing is. Oops. And try to outline whatever it is that you're doing exactly. And then once you've got that, then you can come up here and you can horizontal it perfectly. Okay. So now we know that's framed perfectly in the center, technically. Now, I don't really love that because the head is not so much. So we'll go back over here a little bit. Okay, so that's a good center. All right, we can delete that. All right, so as far as this is concerned, um, you can do this a, full, a few different ways. You could leave it as is. You can add filters to it kind of change it up depending on what the actual material is that you're you're doing this on it may come out looking better in a certain way um, but for this tutorial just so you can see what it's going to look like a straight one-to-one -one, this is a good option now sometimes I'll do it on a sketch because depending on what kind of shading that you've got there it may pop out a little bit better but again for this one we're just going to do it this way just so you can see now on the adjustments I would recommend that you kind of Find a good spot in the grayscale. See how we opened up a little bit more detail in there in the blacks. So the black's going to show through a little bit better. Might be a little much. There we go. Uh, all right. Some good contrast is going to help define these edges right here where these shadows lay. Now, because we're doing it on this dark background and whatever it actually does laser in there it's going to be white so basically we want to invert this image because we don't his face is going to be washed out and you're not going to be able to see it so I'm going to invert okay anything else no that looks good um, this stuff down here obviously it's just going to laser off to the side um, if you want to you can mask this off and get rid of that um, it's not really quite like a vector shape where you can just, you know, throw a shape up here and clip it off. It won't let you do that. But um, we'll waste a little bit of extra time on here. But I think because it's going to fall off, I think it'll look much better. So, all right. So for the power, I've done these before and done a test on them. So I just know I should do 25. And, you know, if it's a normal vector cutout, you know, words, something like that, um, you can go relatively fast. Uh, whenever it comes to this, I like to keep it, you know, 190, 200, somewhere in there. Uh, bitmap mode, we're going to go Jarvis on this one. Um, 
and lines per centimeter we're going to say 160 180 that's just something you have to play with per image every image is going to be slightly different but i'm going to say on this one just because it's a little bit higher resolution we'll go with 180 all right so got everything measured framed up good to go um let's get it processed okay so we're looking at nine minutes 31 seconds uh, if you ever want to get a good idea down to the dots what it's going to look like you can zoom in and take a look at it here um this is what the jarvis looks like if you change it to something else like grayscale or whatever you're going to see that in here the the dots are a little different the dithering is different in there so all right well let's uh get this started and uh, we'll check on it whatever it gets done all right so we got done with bill came out pretty good um i just took a, a shot on the settings never used this image before uh, every image is going to be slightly different. Um, I would say this is a, like, you know, a low to medium resolution. It's not great, uh, but the higher the resolution, the better the results you're going to get. Um, but just make sure to, to play with the power and the speed. You know, something like a vector graphic, you could run this. You know, I'd run it at the same power, but you could run it a whole lot faster than you can this. Um, I would say probably about half the speed in this, just to make sure you don't get any washed out areas in the shadowing and, you know, the detailed areas there. So uh, if you'd like to see me do any other materials, you know, glass, leather, whatever, uh, just let me know in the comments. And uh, please be sure to like and subscribe. It helps me out. It kind of grows the channel and keeps me going. So uh, thanks for watching.